Uh, welcome back to Online Darts, everyone. Shawnee Mac, we suddenly realised that we actually hadn't had you on the channel to do an interview. You've done bits and bobs on the live lounge and the Pro Tour streams, but not actually this side for once. Yeah, for sure, isn't it? I know. Um, look, we first became friends probably, what was it, 2021 Q School? Yeah. When you um, went back to your room and started asking us how you were getting on. Yeah, asking on the chat. Yeah, I was, uh, I was all new to me back then because I didn't know what online darts was. I didn't... Yeah realise what went on in the world of social media darts wise because I hadn't been in it for so long so yeah we got chatting and swap numbers and a few dinners <laughs> yeah and there we are now yeah. uh, look for those that don't know that you had a very good youth career well more than good obviously the Winmail World Youth Masters was on the CV but then just gave it up for your career yeah yeah well, it's a long time ago now 17 won World Youth Masters uh, had ambitions to do as well as I could in darts, wanted to be a pro. But um, yeah, in my early, early 20s, kind of realised I wasn't making it and um, something I had to give and needed a different plan. So yeah, I got my head down studying and I was studying full time, professional exams full time and working full time also. So like everything took a back seat, including darts. And as you know, I didn't pick them up again for, for 10 years. Yeah, well, come on, tell me, but how did you come to that conclusion that? you're not good enough because winning the Wimau Masters Youth is, is a tough competition to win and you've gone against the cream of all the youngsters of, of that generation. Yeah, I mean, back then it, it was, no disrespect to what's available now, but it was the only World Youth event. It was only one. Once a year, that was your opportunity to win a World Youth event. There wasn't what's available now. There's probably four or five, six different uh, types of a World Youth event out there. So. It was a big deal back then, but when when you're trying to make it, I guess the opportunities back then are not what they are now in terms of player management, in terms of investment, and um, that wasn't really there. And um, then PDC, although it had been going a while, um, you were still paying into events. Yeah. Um, it was a hundred pound per event. There was two in a weekend, uh, plus your travel, plus your accommodation. So um, I had good backing. Um, from Colin Cameron and Masada Bar, but it wasn't enough and I wasn't earning enough to keep topping myself up. So ultimately, I came to the decision that based on how well I was doing at the time, I mean, I got to the last 16 of a pro tour, which today would keep you going for a few events. Yeah. Back then, it probably lasted two if you were, if you were sensible, um, but that was about it. So yeah, it was difficult. Looking at it now, do you wish that you were the youth player that you were then in today's era? No, you can't. You can't live your life like that. You can't regret, uh, well, yeah, be envious of what's available now. You, you, you're born when you're born, you know? You, you can't really. I, I, I look at the youth of today and think, stick in, because you've got an enormous opportunity. Look at the youngsters coming through now and the opportunities they have. It's really, really exciting. And I think the brand itself as well really benefits from when the youngsters come on because the, the television audiences go up. Everyone's keen, it's a new name, it's a young face coming through, they've got no fear. Um, so, yeah, but no, I can't have my time again. It's, it doesn't work out that. Exams, family, kids later. Yeah. What made you pick them up again? Lockdown, really. Um, just having that time at home, all that time at home, and then all these online leagues popped up. Um, and my friend, friend Scott Campbell, who's here next week, and yeah. about time that he's been invited. So good luck to Scott. Um, he gave me a shout to play in this league, and I picked him up, and sharpness came back, and I was like, no, this is going okay. And then Q School came, and we were in a second lockdown, I think, and there was the professional sports exemption, so yeah. it was allowed to go ahead, and there was literally nothing to do. And I thought, oh, do you know what? I'll go down there and spend what I thought would be three or four days and then I got through and um, yeah then just came from there, came back, planned to do challenge tour, um, finished second, almost won it. Um, and I've just kind of, as, as business has picked up again and I've been back at work a lot, I've just tried to work in like one weekend a month with family life as well. Um, that's kind of my damn time when I travel and pick what I'm going to do and, and that's where it's kind of gone from. Did your wife know how good or how well you could play when you when you got together? <laughs> uh, yeah, she she when I was trying to do it at the PDC, she would travel with me. Yeah, so um, yeah, she 
I guess, did she see me at my, oh, I guess she probably did see me at my bit. She thinks I'm better now than I was then, um, which, you know, you're definitely seeing more of me now than you did then. Cause even like, there was no streaming at the Pro Tours. No. Um, there was no exposure like here at Modus. Um, there was nothing like that. There was no streaming. Even at your old school BDO events later on, there was no streaming at all. There was no Dark Connect. So Dark's players' exposure was minimal. So not only, you know, did my wife know, probably no one knew. Because unless you were really at the top of the PDC, which was completely dominated by Phil Taylor, then it was really hard to make a name for yourself, I think. Touched on what you said there about the way work's got busy. You can only really commit to one weekend a month. Mm. Is that frustrating in one respect? But obviously, I know your fam family always comes first, but is there part of you that thinks that if I could do two or three where I could be? Uh -huh. um, I try not to think of it like that because the last thing I want is my hobby interfering with my professional life because like I said before I'm already a professional it's just not a dark yeah, yeah. Um, so you know I've got duties as a director and um, you know I've got a, a solid income which the number one priority once you have kids is Buff. is taking care of them so even if I did do more and end up I don't know winning a tour card or whatever am I really going to risk prize money for secure income after all that hard work I've done to get where I am. Not sure that's for me, Phil. I think I'm just enjoying, I, I really am treating it as my downtime, my hobby, and uh, just trying to enjoy it as much as I can. It sounds very familiar to someone else from up your neck of the woods that's a certain firefighter that keeps telling us that he's just a firefighter. No, no. <laughs> Do you believe him? No. <laughs> But he's, uh, he's, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I can't remember exactly how long he'll kill me if I tell you, but I don't think he's that far from public service retirement. So uh, I think it's five or six years, yeah. if I remember rightly, from when, because we had the conversation with him, and it's interesting. I'm going to put you both in the same category here that obviously Suits were talking about that says he, he won't give up work because he's worked too hard for what it would be for giving it up now. Mm. But you obviously said there that you find it hard to combine the two at the level you're playing at. Mm -hmm. Suits is bordering on the elite of the sport, that, that top 32 bracket and beyond. Yeah. In your opinion, is it impossible to combine a full-time job and be a full-time pro? I think if Suits breaks through the next barrier, ends top 24, pushing top 16, he would struggle because the demands on him would be far greater than they are now. If we're talking about potential Premier League, potential World Series, then that's last time he's got it. I know how much he struggles to cover. I, I know, we, he, he tells so, us, he's open honesty that he's got people yeah. covering shifts all over uh, the place for him. And I, I think that it d depends where you've come from as well. Depends what you're, what you're giving up to have a go. You know, these youngsters coming through who are not giving up very much, they could probably survive on just being inside the top 64 for a few years. But if you've got other commitments and mortgages, etc., then I think you still need to be a top 32 player. Johnny Clayton's a prime example. I mean, he was still nervous to give it up. Um, right up until you know, he was winning you know, huge events and still didn't really give it up until recently. Um, so yeah, I think that, that goes to show that uh, there is still... It's, Darts is, it's so, you've seen players ramp up so quickly and go through the ranks and get up there. But it doesn't take long to fall down either, you know, and I think that's at the back of players' minds. Oh, I mean, when you look at like Glenn, Glenn won the Premier League and then two years later he's off the off the tour, not through lack of ability, other yeah. stuff, but yeah, yeah. it can go in the blink of an eye. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So w would you risk security for that? You know, some people might, depends what your risk appetite is. But um, for me, that's nah, it's good fun. Being around you, you're one that I've seen. Your preparation is meticulous. It's set routines all the way through. You look after yourself away yeah. from the hockey and that as well. Is that something that perhaps is missing in the sport, in your opinion, that players don't look after themselves as well as they should on tour? Um, well, you're interrupting me right now, and I'm <laughs> so this, this wasn't planned. Um, I don't know, Phil. I don't know. Um, it's not. I, I'm not close enough to the top pros. Um, I don't know what they do. Uh, I read something actually recently about 
um, PDC have just announced a nutritionist. Yeah. Um, they've looked into correlations between gluten-free diet and, and performance yeah. and longevity that you know, obviously gluten must sap you more and, and make you more tired. I don't know, I just do what works for me. So looking ahead, obviously you've dabbled in the WDF circuit, played, a, played at Lakeside, yeah. would have been nearly what, 18 months ago where, where we are, yeah. are now. Is that more where your future lies within that circuit in particular or not really? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, I've not looked at my time beyond the end of this year. Yeah. So I had a quiet first half of the year, which was a bit of work, a bit of family, um, and a bit of because the WF put Lakeside back to December. Um, I've not played any this year because I didn't see the point. You know, if I'm trying to qualify for Lakeside 2024, I see that as next year's, even though it's a two-year ranking list, I see that as next year's um, problem if I'm going to do that. Um, so really, I've, I've looked at the next few months. Um, I've booked some events. I'm delighted to be here. Uh, and my only goal at the minute is to play myself in the form for Lakeside in December, and I haven't really looked any further. On that, obviously there's a lot of talk and, and chat around it. As players, have you had any information regarding prize money, TV deals, or, or anything like that? Uh, no, not, not on prize or TV. Uh, TV, there was a public announcement. That they're, uh, I know, they're, they're, Nick, Nick's openly said in a few interviews recently that they're, that they're talking to yeah. but I just wondered, as players, had you been given any more information on what you're playing for or anything like that? No, we've been, I've been talking, no, nothing publicly, I've been talking to Nick a little bit. Um, he's been open enough to share that ticket sales are going well. They've already Yeah, yeah no, your ticket sales look very good. Yeah, they've outsold last year in its totality, which is great. Um, and I was talking to him about buying tickets and stuff like that um, for my friends and family. So, but nothing, nothing um, on prize money or, or television rights. Some people will be uh, maybe a bit unsettled by that. Me personally, I'm not playing for the money. Um, I'm playing for the prestige of, of being on that stage and what I view outside the, the, the pros, the, one, the best one to it in the world, I think that tournament is the next best tournament still out there. That's what I believe personally. Um, and I look at the history and I remember watching Bob Taylor before I went to school in the morning um, <laughs> on the highlights or you'd be watching it at two in the morning when the, the, the highlights were on back then um, and you'd be buzzing with the side. So that's why I'm playing. If, if we're playing for 10 pence, I'll still be playing. Yeah. Nice, because obviously we hear so much and certain players you see on their socials that they're not particularly happy about not knowing, so got a refreshing outlook. Being back here at the Super Series, what has this done for you and amateur players' careers? I touched on it in a few um, other interviews, but I think outside of not having a tour card, this is the platform to play here. You know, what this does for people's games, it's, it's not, you know, it's not a tour. It's different from that. It's not an open. It's you're coming in and you're you're playing a defined schedule, and you're guaranteed four, five, six matches, depending on what group you're in, against what I would class as the best of the rest outside the tour card. Um, you just don't get, you know, practice tournaments, competitive play like that anywhere else. Um, I think, you know, Modus will be. A, I'd be surprised if there are many tour card holders or people who win their tour card in the next few years who haven't been here and play. Um, because I just I think this is this is the place to play and the clamber to play here before Q School, I'd imagine, will be huge. I think every manager and their dog will be trying to get their players in here um, to get them ready for Q School. Um, just a note to everyone, remember who's played before, all right? <laughs> I was, was going to say, it's, it's come a long way from the box at Southampton with a creaky floorboard. I, I actually like that room. <laughs> I really like that room. I, I thought it was a great... It was quirky, I, it was, wasn't it? Robert Thornton had said to me, it reminded him of a streaming board at the Pro Tour. Yeah. Um, that's what it was like. And for some of us that had never played that, you know, you can only imagine that, that, that he, was, he was comparing it correctly. Um, obviously, this is, this is different, but you've got to get used to playing up there and this being empty like that is different as well yeah, when yeah. have you ever played in a stage when it's been empty yeah. and then Saturday night it's, it's, fans it's, in, yeah. it's completely different so um, no it, it's it's great super um, 
it, unbelievable product. From the business side, said before, I'm really interested in, in the product and the brand and, and how that's grown. Um, and Moses have done unbelievably well with it. Last one before I let you go. You obviously, your boys watch you on TV. Have they, they picked, got the bug for it yet? Uh, yeah, um, more in the winter. Uh, they're both well into football, which is, <laughs> yeah. which is what you want. But in the winter, when they can't get out, yeah, the, the, the board, well, the board's up all the time, but yeah, they are throwing more. Um, they won't be watching tonight, they'll be in bed like, for school. Just, yeah, just, a bit late. Oh, yeah, because you're back north of the border, you've gone back to school now because they're still off yeah. down here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we went back on, on Tuesday. And yeah. Matt, Matt started uh, P1, so <laughs> he's just uh, getting into that group. But I'm sure they might, they'll certainly ask first thing in the morning how I've got on. And, and if it's gone well, they might watch a bit of it before they go to school. Surely, Matt, it's a pleasure as always to get you on the channel, mate. Thank you very much. Thanks, Phil.